<clears throat> okay, so first, um, let's talk about the structure of the essay. So um, what you should be doing is looking in your book um, where under evaluation essays, um, the pages in your syllabus, there's a section where it talks about the key features. We've gone over that several times in class, but also in that same section, it talks about a couple pages down it lays out possible organizational structures for your essays. Um, there's only two that they mention, but there's a lot of different ways that you can enter your evaluation essay. You, the, the two they talk about are starting with your subject and then going through the criteria and bringing the subject through the criteria and evaluating the subject based on the criteria kind of paragraph by paragraph, but you start by introducing the subject. Um, the other way they do it, I think, was you start by introducing, I guess, the criteria. I forget the other the other pattern, but it doesn't matter because those aren't the only two. But the point is you need to make it clear that you are introducing your audience to the subject and then evaluating the subject, the content. I'm sorry. I need to stop looking at myself because, well, maybe I should, though, because my hair is going to be distracting to you if it's, like, everywhere, which it is. Maybe I should put this up. <clears throat> Anyway, so, okay, so one of the problems I'm seeing is a couple essays, um, or even just points in the essays, folks are uh, <coughs> are um, going too far into um, maybe description of the subject, or rather they're going off topic, so they're no longer evaluating the subject, they're just explaining something about the subject. And that, that does not relate to the evaluation. So you want to avoid that. So if you find yourself writing about anything and it's not related to both the subject and an evaluation, which of course has to be related to your judgment of the subject and a criteria, then you're kind of going in the wrong direction. Okay, so sometimes people would be talking about something really interesting that had a lot of side topics that are interesting and they just go into a side topic briefly in the middle of a paragraph um, and that would pull your reader out of what you're trying to do, which is to show that you're evaluating the subject, right? Um, that brings me to another thing, which is unity of paragraphs. We'll do some more work on this in class, and I'll post a link down with some more information under this video, but unity of paragraphs means that you're making sure that every single part of your paragraph lines up with your topic sentence. So just like an essay, when we've talked about essay structure, every part of an essay has to support the main uh, argument, you know, the, the main claim, the thesis. Um, every part of a paragraph has to line up with the topic sentence. And of course, our topic sentences support our thesis statements or our claims, right? So that means that every part of your essay is in alignment. So when you have a paragraph that veers off in a different direction and brings your audience away from your topic sentence, that part of the paragraph probably doesn't even belong in the essay. So watch out for that. Um, basically, one way to test this is to have your topic sentence and then as you write the essay, or at, I mean the paragraph, or as you read, read it, test each section of the paragraph against the topic sentence. Does this really support it, or is this just connected in kind of a sort of associative way? Like, is it sort of connected because it's almost the same topic, but not really supporting the point? If that's the case, remove that part, okay? All right, so that's the structure of your essays, like how you're doing the evaluation. Make sure it's very clear that you are evaluating in each paragraph, um, or, or rather throughout the whole essay. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk to people about is run-on sentences. So we talked about this a little bit. Um, if you have a really long sentence, it's likely a run-on sentence. One way to test that is to look through it and see if there are two or more independent clauses that can stand alone that are connected without a semicolon. Um, if that's the case, you've got a run-on sentence. Um, if they're connected with a comma, that's a comma splice. But anytime you have excessively long sentences or you're just trying to say too much in the space of one sentence, test it and see if it's a run-on. Um, I marked it where I saw it um, uh, so that you guys would know and be able to visualize it in your own work. Um, another problem, and this is a majorly common problem with uh, writers in English 101 and 102, is passive voice. So passive voice isn't technically an error, it's just a weak way of writing. So passive voice is where we take the subject and make it the object. So I'm trying to think of an example, and of course now I can't, but it would be like, um, I 
the chair that was thrown rather than he threw the chair, right? So we want to know who did the action. So it's so the chair that was thrown becomes the subject rather than the the action of the throwing of the chair, right? Um, that's not a great example. So I'm going to post a link about this as well, and we'll do more work on this in class. But I marked your um, passive voices. It's a, a, a passive se sentences. It's basically the passive voice is clunky and awkward because it takes too many steps to get to your point. It um, it often sounds to, to to writers, to new writers especially, like it sounds fancier, like it's more academic, um, but it's not. <laughs> so um, it just takes extra words to say the same thing, and that's why you want to avoid it. So I'll post a link to um, some exercises about that and some more explanation. Um, and again, we'll talk about that more um, together. Um, the next thing... Uh, word choice, be careful about word choice. Just make sure that you're writing clearly, right? You don't want to use too many vague words like thing or uh, any word that doesn't have a specific meaning attached to it or is a little bit vague. Uh, you want to avoid that. Um, the clearer your words are, the clearer your sentences are. And when you're using specific and clear words, you use less words, right? And that brings me to concision, which is just a fancy word for not using too many extra words. Concision is kind of getting to the point more directly. Um, that's a really important thing to develop in our writing um, because it also supports our clarity. All right, let me think if there was anything else I wanted to go over for these essays. I don't... I think that's pretty much it. <coughs> Excuse me. The major thing was <clears throat> the way that you're structuring the arguments, um, having extra information that wasn't necessarily supportive of the thesis and um, unity of paragraphs. So if you guys could go through and in addition to applying all the edits I've already given you, um, look at the links I'm going to post and apply those things, we'll be in really good shape for starting our um, analysis, uh, textual analysis essays next week. Um, what I do want to say is that for the most part, I, I'm really um, happy with the work I'm seeing. Like This seems to be a higher quality of um, English 101 uh, essays so far um, compared to other courses so that I've taught, so you guys should be proud with regard to that, and certainly no one had any trouble like making the length of the essay, um, so well done there as well. All right, um, I will talk to you guys later, and I'm going to post a link for office hours here, or in Blackboard. I'm about to seize. Okay, bye.